In this video, I will walk you through some College Board multiple choice questions pertaining to rates of change. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.2. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number one, the table gives the average rates of change of a function f over different intervals. On which of the intervals does the function increase the most? On the interval from a to b, the average rate of change of f of x is given by f at b minus f at a over b minus a. Notice that this expression in the top, f at b minus f at a, this is the increase on the interval from a to b. This is like y minus y. This is the difference in the y values. This will be the increase or decrease if it's dropping. So the average rate of change is equal to the increase divided by b minus a. We can get increase by itself if we multiply both sides by b minus a. So the average rate of change times b minus a will give you the increase. Let's add another row onto this table where we can record the increase over each interval. Remember, we just found that the increase is equal to the average rate of change times b minus a, the width of the interval. For the interval from 0 to 1, the increase will be the average rate of change, which is 10, times 1 minus 0. So that's just 10. That will be the increase. On the interval from 1 to 4, the increase will be the average rate of change which is negative 5, meaning this is actually a drop, times the width of the interval, which is uh, 4 minus 1. So this is negative 5 times 3, which is negative 15, a fall of 15 units. For the interval from 4 to 8, the increase will be the average rate of change, which is 2, times the width of the interval, 8 minus 4. So this is 2 times 4, which is 8. And on the interval from 8 to 10, the increase will be the average rate of change, which is 6, times the width of the interval, 10 minus 8, which is 2. 6 times 2 is 12. So the interval over which the function increases the most is the interval from 8 to 10 with an increase of 12. So the answer is D. Number two, the graph of function y equals g of x is given. Of the following, on which interval is the average rate of change of g the least? Remember, on a graph, the average rate of change is the slope. So we are looking for the interval on which the slope is the least. The average rate of change from negative 3 to negative 2 will be the slope of this line. The average rate of change from negative 1 to 0 will be the slope of this line. We are looking for the least rate of change, the smallest slope, and the slope on the interval from negative 3 to negative 2 is positive, while the slope on the interval from negative 1 to 0 is negative. A negative number is always going to be less than any positive number. So A is out. B is winning so far to be the least. The average rate of change on the interval from 1 to 2 will be the slope of this line. Which of these has the lesser slope? Well, this first segment has a slope of something like negative 2.5. I'm just doing a quick rise over run, and this is down 2.5 over 1. The second segment has a slope of negative 1. It's down 1 over 1. Negative 2.5 is less than negative 1. So the interval from negative 1 to 0 has the lesser 
average rate of change. B is still winning, C is out. Finally, the average rate of change on the interval from 3 to 4 will be the slope of this line, and that is 0. Negative 2.5 is less than 0, so the answer is B. Number 3 is calculator active. The function f is given by f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 5. Which of the following describes f? Since this is calculator active, let's go ahead and type f of x in as y1 on the graphing calculator. Hit y equals and type it in right here. It was x squared plus 3x minus 5. Let's take a look at the graph. Option A says, for any interval of x, the function always has a positive rate of change. That means a positive slope. So this is false because, for example, on this interval, there is a negative rate of change. We see a negative slope right here. A is not the answer. How about B? For any interval of x, the function always has a negative rate of change. Well, that is also false because we see positive rates of change on this side of the graph. Uh, a negative rate of change means decreasing, but this function is decreasing but also increasing, so B is out. In my mind, I'm always picturing this chart showing the graphical relationships between a function f, its rate of change, and the rate of change of the rate of change. So what I've been saying a few times in this problem so far is that a positive rate of change means that the function is increasing. A negative rate of change means that the function is decreasing. Option C says for any interval where x is less than negative 1.5, the function has a positive rate of change. And for any interval where x is greater than negative 1.5, the function has a negative rate of change. I'm betting the negative 1.5 is the x value of the minimum. Let's go ahead and verify that on the graphing calculator by hitting second trace minimum, option 3. When it says left bound, just make sure the pointer is to the left of the minimum and hit enter. When it says right bound, move the pointer to the right of the minimum and hit enter. And when it says guess, move the pointer near the minimum and hit enter. Rounded to three decimal places, this is negative 1.5. Anyway, option C basically says that to the left of negative 1.5, the function is increasing, and to the right of negative 1.5, the function is decreasing. Well, that's backwards. It is decreasing on the left and increasing on the right. So C is not the answer. That means the answer has to be D, but let's take a look. Option D basically says that to the left of negative 1.5, the function is decreasing, and to the right of negative 1.5, the function is increasing. And that's exactly what we see. So the answer is D. Number four, the function f has a negative average rate of change on every interval of x from zero to 10. The function g has a negative average rate of change on every interval of x from zero to five and a positive average rate of change on every interval of x from five to 10. Which of the following statements must be true about the function h defined by h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x? on the interval from 0 to 10. Let's record the information they just gave us on a chart off to the side. Remember that a negative average rate of change means that the function is decreasing. So this is basically saying that f is decreasing from 0 to 10. So f is decreasing in this interval and this interval we are told that g has a negative average rate of change from 0 to 5 and a positive average rate of change 
from 5 to 10. So g is decreasing on this interval and increasing on this interval. Since h is f plus g, what can we say about what h is doing in each one of these intervals? Well, on the interval from 0 to 5, since f is decreasing and g is also decreasing, h will definitely be decreasing. But what about the interval from 5 to 10? We don't actually have enough information to tell whether h is increasing or decreasing on this interval. I'm just going to put some question marks in here. It depends on how much f is decreasing and how much g is increasing. If f is decreasing by 7 and g is increasing by 3, well, the decrease will win and h will be decreasing. But if f is decreasing by 3 and g is increasing by 7, then the increase wins and h would be increasing. We just don't know. Let's look at the answer choices one by one. Option A, h is decreasing on the entire interval from 0 to 10. Well, we just saw that we don't know what's happening on the interval from 5 to 10, so A cannot be the answer. B, h is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 5 and increasing from 5 to 10. Well, yes, on the decreasing from 0 to 5 part, but we don't know what's happening from 5 to 10, so B cannot be the answer. Option C, h is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 5, and h is neither increasing nor decreasing on the interval from 5 to 10. We don't know that. We have nothing but question marks over here. So C is not the answer. Option D, h is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 5. Yep. h can be increasing, decreasing, or both increasing and decreasing on the interval from 5 to 10. In other words, we just don't know. The answer is D. That matches what we discussed. Number five will not fit on the screen all at once, so take in this graph for a moment. Now I read, the daily high temperature at a certain point in a river is modeled by the graph. Each point on a vertical grid line indicates the temperature in degrees Celsius on the first day of the indicated month. Of the following, on the first day of which month is the rate of change of the temperature the greatest? Remember that on a graph, rate of change is slope. So we are asking for which month the slope is the greatest. The slope of the February tangent line is zero. We can't tell the exact slope of the May tangent line, but rise over run, it's close to three. The August tangent line has a slope of zero again, and the November tangent line has a slope of approximately negative three, down three over one. The question was, on the first day of which month is the rate of change the greatest? And that's going to be May. So the answer is B. Number six, two drones are flying over a given area and their heights above the ground are changing. The table gives the change in height in feet for the drones over successive six second intervals. Which of the following is true about the average rates of change for drone A and drone B over the time interval from t equals 0 seconds to t equals 30 seconds. Let's add another column on the end of this table showing the overall change in the height of each drone on the total interval from 0 to 30. We can find that by simply adding up all of these numbers. Turns out on the interval from 0 to 30, both drone A and drone B have a height increase of 16 feet. So obviously the average rate of change on the interval from 0 to 30 for both drones will be the same. For both drones, the average rate of change in the height would be given by the height at 30 minus the height at 0 divided by 30 minus 0. 
We don't know the height at 30, and we don't know the height at 0. But we know that the change in height, h at 30 minus h at 0, is 16 for both drones. So this would be 16 over 30 feet per second. which reduces to 8 over 15 feet per second for both drones. So the answer is A. The average rates of change are equal. Don't be fooled by option D. Many students mistakenly think that we can't calculate the average rates of change because we are not given the actual heights of the drones, only the changes in heights. But as I showed you, we can still calculate the average rate of change on the interval from 0 to 30 because h at 30 minus h at 0 is the change in height from 0 to 30, which we do know. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.